Hello everyone, I thought I would um, try recording and filming the uh, Peer City Assembly for this week to see if that makes it a little bit easier for some of you to access. Um, and this week's Peer City Assembly is to do with um, Zest, which is a really exciting new trait that we haven't talked about yet. But as always, we're going to start with the Musician of the Week. Um, so I'm going to get rid of myself at the bottom of the screen and just start, start talking, talking you through and give the opportunity to uh, watch the video. Okay, so. So, as I said, the Musician of the Week this week is Louis Armstrong, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to play a bit of uh, his music, and I'd like to think about what genre it is, what you notice about it, and how it's different to other musicians that we've heard as our Musicians of the Week, okay? Okay, so that was just a little snippet. Uh, so I wonder if you could think of what, what genre it was, uh, anything you noticed about it, and how it's different to other musicians you might have heard. So what I suggest you do, if you just want to pause the video just for a second, um, have a little think, and then um, press play again, and I'll just talk about what, what I think. So Louis Armstrong is famous for being like a jazz musician, and um, you might have noticed, or you might have heard a few different instruments in particular, and there's a clue in the picture, that he was a very famous trumpeter. There's quite a lot of trumpets in there, and if you listen to more of his music, you'd see other instruments that you might hear in jazz jazz bands. You might hear some saxophones and some trombones, um, and all sorts of other instruments like that, and occasional piano. Um, in terms of how it's different to other musicians we've heard, one of the main things you might have noticed is that there wasn't any singing in that snippet of song, and a lot of Louis Armstrong's songs, you wouldn't actually hear any singing. Okay, some of them, some of them you might have a little bit, but generally it's all about um, the music itself and how that compares with other styles. I suppose if you can think about classical music, often that doesn't have much in the way of singing either. But pop music and rock music, um, folk music, and things like that, they and R&B, they have a lot more singing. Okay. So this week's assembly is all to do with zest and it's about being full of energy and purpose, approaching life, feeling activated and enthusiastic. So these are the different success criteria for the different phases. So I'm just going to run through them now. So in phase one, uh, you know that you need to be active every day. You can say I can when faced with new challenges. You're excited to learn something new. You commit to something 100% and always do your best. You move on from problems, frustrations and setbacks. You know things and ways to make yourself happy and you feel motivated and proud when you achieve something new. So that's in phase one. And then going up to phase two, you understand how your mental and physical health can impact your positivity. You know how important sleep and diet are to energy levels. You're enthusiastic to try new things and want to be challenged. You can be optimistic and move on from problems, frustrations and setbacks. And you understand the need to limit your screen time and widen your interests. And finally up to phase three, I'll make sure I have enough energy for the day by using the healthy body and healthy mind traits. I'm open-minded to have a positive attitude to new experiences and things I think I won't enjoy. I can be an optimist and explain my mistakes as impersonal, specific and short-term rather than personal, permanent and pervasive. So for phase three, you'll spend a bit more time looking at that. I, I can identify my own passions and interests and work them into my everyday life. So as you can see, there's a lot of things that link all the different phases together. So what I'd like you to do, have a look at these three pictures and think, which is the odd one out? So again, I suggest you pause the video and think which of these is the odd one out. Okay, well, you might have come up with some different answers, but if I was gonna pick out which one I think is the odd one out, it would probably be this one. It's a picture of a lemon being grated because that is something called lemon zest. So you might have got confused when you heard the word zest because you're right in thinking that zest is the stuff that you can get from lemons and oranges and limes if you grate them. But what we're talking about are what these two pictures represent. So being enthusiastic and playful and energetic. So if you're in class, maybe always having your hand up and being um, active in the lesson, or if you're out and about being um, active, 
uh, jumping, being a bit playful. Okay. So what I'm going to do, just to try and explain uh, what is Zest a little bit more, I'm just going to show you this video and you can have a little watch along. Zest makes it so you can have more friends. Zest is the power to change other people's attitude. With Zest you can get things done in a better mood. The guy on the bench is being invited to basketball. He is entering it with energy so he'll play better and have more fun. Zest is enjoying what you do, learning new things, and being around happy people. Zest makes life less boring. You only have one life and you need to make the best of it. So I'm just going to pause the video there and I'm just going to skip through because these are some of the children that made those posters and it's them again talking a little bit more about um, what they think Zest is. So on Google Classroom I've put the link to this video so if you want to watch the whole video um, you're more than welcome to it, it might help clarify things. I'm just going to show a few more of their posters that they came up with for Zest. I'm just skipping forward. Important and special. One thing I learned about Zest was that most people will say yes to is this important to you. This is important because you can have fun. There are many examples of this, and some of those examples are having fun with family and friends, being grateful, and doing service. This helps you when you are facing new opportunities, like rock climbing when you're afraid of heights. It helps you go into it with force and makes it seem easier. Okay, so again, I'm just going to skip through them speaking, but if you want to watch, watch the video, remember to click on that link on Google Classroom. Just the last few posters that they came up with, just because I really like um, the variety that you can see. This is when you approach a new situation with enthusiasm and get involved. You have a spunky and happy attitude. Zest gives you excitement for life instead of boredness. With Zest, you approach new things with energy and excitement. You want Zest so you can have good friends. Part of Zest is actively participating. Actively participating means you can actively participate in doing anything like play catch. Cool. So I really enjoyed um, looking at those posters. Um, if you'd like to watch the full video, remember it's on Google Classroom. Right, so what do you think this means? I quite like this quote when I saw it. Um, I'll just read it to you and then you can have a think about what you think it means. To truly have a zest for life, you must squeeze all the juice out of it, especially the lemons. Believe it or not, they make life even more delicious. The lessons you get out of them make you strong, resilient, and amazing. So I suggest you pause your video there, just have a little think about what you think that means. Okay, so to me, try to pick out the key things from that. It's talking about being ready for new experiences and learning, um, understanding that sometimes bad things might happen, but they're the things that can help you to learn and become better. Um, and overall, the message to me is about being positive and optimistic. Okay, so some of you might have described it as being half empty. Some of you might have described it as being half full. And some of you might have described it slightly differently, but if you said you thought the glass was half full, you might be called an optimist. So an optimist is someone that hopes for the best. And if you thought that actually it looked half empty and you're a bit disappointed, you might be seen as someone called a pessimist. And uh, you might tend to kind of fear the worst or get worried about things, okay? Um, so it's really important, it links very much to Zest about trying to be optimistic because um, optimism, there's a lot of power behind it. So things that you can do if you are optimistic, you can get over problems and setbacks quicker, you can keep trying and not give up, it links to perseverance there. You can try new things, that might be new hobbies or new trying to make new friends. Um, you look forward to the future and you're more likely to have fun. So those are all really important reasons um, for having optimism, okay? So this video that I found is just for a little bit of fun. Um, these children made it. It's all linked to kind of encouraging people to drink milk, but it's called a glass half full new. So I think you might, you might enjoy it as being something a little bit silly. Amanda Germain, and this is Last Half Full News, brought 
to you by Got Milk, the news you never knew you needed. Try saying that five times fast. School's in session and we need to dress to impress. That's why we got Zoe Miyoshi to announce the winner of her Classroom Runway Fashion Competition. Welcome to the segment of Classroom Runway on Glass Half Full News. Today we decide who gets what and who stays in the closet. Alpha number one, you're cute, you're so sweet, but you're going to clash with my strawberry milkshake. And that's a big no-no. Fascinating. Alpha number two, you're edgy, you've got that kind of cool vibe, and you have my name embroidered on you. And we always want your teacher to remember your name on the first day of school. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with alpha number two. Sorry, alpha number one, but your game pattern is a deal breaker. Back to you, Amanda. Oh, hang on. I'm hearing we got an exclusive. Check this out. Hi, Amanda. We're here to teach you our very own glass half full book. Step one, make sure your glass is half full. Step two, dance with your glass. <laughs> What a trip! Thanks for that. And now, in sports, we go to Leo Kelly, the Shirley Temple King, for a Sunday snack down competition. On this week's snack down, we're going milk versus milk. In one corner, we have regular milk, aka liquid white magic. And in the other corner, we have chocolate milk, aka Coco Noco. Ice cold, right out of the refrigerator, just the way I like it. Just as expected, too. Really good. Now let's try the chocolate milk. Hmm, taste of an aged cocoa on the palate, with a hint of hazelnut on the nose. Okay. Wait, what is this? A cherry flavor challenger? The Milky Temple. Mmm, that's my kryptonite. Love the cherry. Looks like we have a winner. Exciting, exciting stuff. Thanks everybody for tuning in. In our next episode, why are waiters called waiters if we're the ones who wait? Till then, if your glass is half full, it's better than not having anything going on for you. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I, when I watched it, I just smiled most of the way through. I thought all of those children showed an awful lot of zest. Uh, quite playful, just quite fun um, way of uh, encouraging people to drink milk, I guess. So, how can you be more optimistic? Hopefully there's, there's lots of ways that you can think of. They link to the success criteria. So ways to be more optimistic include making sure you go to bed at a sensible time, not spending too much time on screens, especially just before bedtime, eating a balanced diet, including fruit and vegetables. So don't always leave things on your plate at lunchtime. I have seen you throwing those peas in the bin every week. So maybe next, next time you have peas on your plate, you should try eating them for a change. And maybe find a hobby that you like. So um, it could be anything, but things like sewing or yoga or doing some Lego or reading new things. Anything like that could be cool. And the last one, it seems a bit silly, but actually it's really, really important. Be kind and smile more. Both of those things can help you feel better and a bit more positive and optimistic um, and can make other people feel the same way. Okay. So finally today we've got um, a story called The Hyena Who Lost Her Laugh. And it's all, uh, it's all about changing negative thinking. Okay. So I'm gonna press play and I'll, I'll play it through. It's just over 10 minutes long. Whilst it's going, and when you think about, have you ever felt the way that Hillary did? Hillary's the name of the hyena. And then how did you make yourself feel more positive again? And finally, what did Hillary realize by the end of the story? Okay. The hyena who lost her laugh. Whoops, I'm gonna try that again. I tried making it full screen, but that went too big. So I'll just keep it this size. The hyena who lost her laugh. A story about changing your negative thinking. Hillary had not gone outside all day. She sat meekly at her bedroom desk with her head in her hands, thinking and worrying. Hillary's mom walked in and Hillary didn't even look at her. 
Hillary, come out of your room, please. Come down to the kitchen, and we'll have some cookies and a chat. No thanks, Mom. I don't feel like it. Earlier that day, Hillary's friends had come over to see her. Hey, Hillary, come on out and play with us, her best friend Harry shouted. We're chasing birds. No thanks, guys. I don't feel like it, Hillary replied without any of her usual enthusiasm. Hillary was popular among the other hyenas because she laughed so much. She had a wonderful laugh that sounded like parrots squawking, dishes breaking, and bells ringing all at once. All the hyenas knew when Hillary was laughing. But her friends hadn't heard that laugh for weeks. Later, when Hillary's brother Franklin came into her bedroom to talk, Hillary didn't smile. She didn't even seem to care he was there. She just really wanted to fall asleep. Franklin made funny faces, oh, and Hillary yawned. He stood on his head, and Hillary sighed. He even tried to tickle her with feathers, oh, but she only looked annoyed. Come on, Hillary, I know there's a laugh in you. Let me hear it, he begged. Not now, Franklin. I'm not in the mood, Hillary said. Hillary didn't feel interested in any of the activities she, she used to like, and she really didn't know why. When her dad came home, he went into her bedroom to speak with her. What's wrong, Hillary? he asked. Hillary only sighed and said, everything. It started last week. Mrs. Toothin told us we were going to have a spelling test. I was excited because I'm really good at spelling. At least I thought it was. I studied a lot of words, but I still got a D on the test. I guess I'm just stupid. Hillary got even more upset as she continued to tell her dad about the events of the past week. When my friends and I were playing kickball after school, I dropped the ball and our team lost the tournament. Now all my friends hate me. I can't do anything right. I'm no good in school, and I'm no good at sports. It sounds like you've had a rough week, Hillary's dad said, as he pulled up a stool to sit next to her. It's been terrible, Hillary agreed. Maybe you should try looking at it all in a different way, he said. You said you were good at spelling, but maybe the words on the spelling test were different than the ones you studied. Maybe you just need to study harder next time. Then Hillary's dad put his arms around her shoulders. And as far as the kickball game goes, sounds like you just made a mistake. Everyone makes a mistake sometimes, Hillary's dad explained. You just don't understand, Hillary said softly as she began to cry. I understand it felt awful to get a D, said Hillary's dad. And when you made a mistake and your team lost the tournament, I know you felt responsible. But do you really think your friends hate you? Would you hate one of your teammates if she made the same mistake? Mm, I guess not, said Hillary. Sometimes, if you think about things differently, you feel differently, Hillary's dad said. I want you to try to think more positively from now on. If you catch yourself having a negative thought and feeling sorry for yourself, I want you to change that thought into a positive one. I think you'll find a positive attitude goes a long way to solving most problems. Hillary's dad patted her on the head and left her alone to think about what he had said. Hillary felt a little better, but she hardly felt like laughing. It won't make any difference. I'm still a failure. But I'll give it a try, Hillary thought to herself. Hillary got up from her chair, determined to try. The next day, Hillary had a drum lesson. She played well for the first two pages of music, but on the third page, she made a mistake. She dropped her drumsticks and sank to the floor. I'm terrible at drumming, she complained to her drum teacher. I 
don't know why my parents are making me learn an instrument. Don't they know I'm not good at anything? Mr. Bailey, her drum teacher, stared at her in bewilderment. You just made one mistake, Hillary, he said. Making a mistake doesn't mean you're bad at something. It just means you need to try again, a little harder. Hillary was feeling like things were hopeless, but she thought about what her dad had said. It sounded a lot like what Mr. Bailey had just told her. Maybe I'm not so terrible at drumming. Maybe I did just make a mistake, she thought. Hillary picked up her drumsticks once again and tried a little harder. She did make another mistake, but it wasn't until the fourth page of music, and then she just kept going. It's just a mistake, and it's not the same one as before, so I did learn something, she thought to herself. By the end of the lesson, she could play that piece perfectly. After her drum lesson, Hillary was feeling much better. She really loved playing the drums. But then she heard a voice inside her say something that made her feel bad again. The voice said, just because you finally got one piece right doesn't mean you're not stupid. You'll probably mess up the next time. You never do anything right. Hillary started to feel upset again. But then she thought, what if it's the other way around? What if I am smart, but sometimes I still can't get things right? Does that mean I should give up? No way. Hillary started to feel better again when she thought about it differently. The next day, Hillary went to her friend Janet's house. Janet was using paper and glue and crayons and scissors to make a rocket ship. Janet, you're so good at making things. I'd never be able to come up with an idea for making paper rocket ships like you did, Hillary said. I bet you can make one just like mine. Just watch how I do it. Grab some supplies and try, Janet said. Hillary sat down next to Janet and started working, paying close attention to what Janet was doing. But no matter what Hillary did, her rocket ship didn't look anything like Janet's. It didn't look like anything at all. It's no use, Janet. I'm using the same stuff as you. I think I'm doing what you're doing. But I'm just making a big mess of it all, Hillary said, holding up a poor imitation of Janet's rocket ship. Suddenly, the room was filled with the sound of paper tearing. Hillary was so totally frustrated and sad, she just tore her work into a zillion pieces. Why did you do that? Janet asked. Mine was stinky, said Hillary. It wasn't as good as yours. No matter how hard I try, I can never make things like you do. That's not true, said Janet. My first rocket ship looked worse than yours. This was the f your first one, Hillary. When you've made as many as I have, yours will look great too. Really? asked Hillary. Really, said Janet. Later that afternoon, when Hillary returned home from Janet's house, Hillary's mom was busy preparing dinner. Hillary, would you give me a hand? Would you bake a cake for dessert tonight? Her mom asked. Sure, mom. You know I love to bake, and I'm really hungry. A cake after dinner sounds great to me, Hillary said. Hillary measured out the ingredients into a large bowl, one by one, the flour and the sugar and all the rest. After dinner, Everyone was eager to taste Hillary's cake. It looked almost too good to eat. Hillary's dad took a big bite and said, This is going to taste so... Then he gasped with a strange look on his face and tried to swallow the cake. Hillary took a big bite herself and knew immediately what the problem was. She had added too much salt. It felt gritty in the mouth, and it burned all the way down. Hillary's eyes filled with tears. She had ruined dinner. Don't cry, said Franklin. The icing is really great. Don't cry, said Hillary's mom. Franklin's right. The icing is really, really great. Don't cry, said Hillary's dad. This is the best icing I've ever tasted. Then, to everyone's surprise, Hillary stood up, and laughed. Her laugh shook the whole room. It made the 
forks fall off the table. Even the light above the table started swinging. I put too much salt in the cake. It's terrible, Hillary laughed. That's the yuckiest cake I have ever tasted. And Hillary laughed even harder. And our family laughed too. But no one laughed quite like Hillary. When everyone finally stopped laughing, Hillary asked, can I make another cake after dinner, mom? Hillary's mom smiled. Of course you can. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That's just what I'll do, Hillary thought as she began laughing again. So I hope you enjoyed that story. I wonder how many of you have ever felt the way Hillary did. Maybe put up your hand or shake your head or nod your head if you have or shake your head if you haven't. Yeah, I think everyone probably feels like that sometimes. The important thing is how you make yourself feel more positive again. So I wonder what you were thinking, how people have made you feel more positive again. Maybe pause the video here, just have a little think about that one. So I wonder if maybe it's other people that often have to cheer you up, whether it's your friends or your family, or whether you have to try and do it yourself, you just do something to calm yourself down, maybe some coloring or some reading, and then you just try and forget about it. Um, or if it's something else, it has to be, yeah, you kick in a football or something else um, that, that will help. Um, but I wonder if you realize what Hillary realized by the end of the story. Again, maybe just pause the video here if you wanna just have a little think for a second. So I think, yeah, particularly on one of the last pages, she realized that actually if she, um, she uh, didn't get something the first time, it was fine to just keep trying, keep trying, persevering, not giving up. So her cake didn't work out very well, but she realized, do you know what? I'm gonna try another one to make it better. Okay, so not just giving up straight away, not just having a bit of a tantrum, not getting miserable, um, just keep trying and things will definitely get better. So I hope you enjoyed all of that um, stuff to do with zest. Uh, it's quite difficult at the moment, I think being really like zesty and positive about things when lots of things are different and not quite as we'd like them. So it's really, really important that you do look after yourselves and remember some of those things um, that you can do to help yourself be more positive, especially like going to bed at a sensible time, not spending too much time on screens, eating well, um, and yes, yeah, smiling and finding something you enjoy doing. Okay, and I'll see you next week for the next week's assembly. Okay, bye.